let's continue our discussion on github in the last class we have seen how to create a github repository how to manage access for a github repository how to add collaborators for a repository we have also seen how to uh, commit code changes to a repository and uh, we have seen many things like how to use eclipse id and perform all these things on a github repository so if you have not uh, visited my previous lecture please visit that lecture before you proceed with today's concepts and in today's class we're going to learn about what is fork what is a pull request and uh, what do you mean by merge in github and while you're merging um, a branch with the master you'll also get conflicts how can we resolve conflicts what is a conflict so all these things we're going to see in today's class we'll first start with the definition for uh, some of these things so what is a fork a fork is nothing but creating a copy of the main repository in your github profile that's it and what is pull a pull request is used for proposing uh, code changes to the main repository okay here is the code changes list of code changes and by pull request i mean that i'm going to push all these code changes to the main repository and merge merge is nothing but merging all the proposed code changes with the main repository so these are some of the definitions and i have created a visualization for you for better understanding the meaning of all these things so let's go and take a look at the visualization so let's consider a github user by name satish i call him the owner because he owns a github repository and the name of this github repository we can consider that to be github demo so satish is the owner of the repository github demo and inside this repository he maintains a very simple class file with a simple method as shown here this method uh, is a java method that prints an hello message to the user and there is one more collaborator or we can call him a team member with whom satish works so the team member's name is sam so sam is one of the collaborators and he collaborates and works on the code that satish owns since he is a collaborator satish gives access on this particular repository to this team member sam so that's how you know we have seen this in the last class how to provide access to a user on a repository so he adds sam as a collaborator on the repository when you add someone to be the collaborator he can go and work on the code in the repository he can propose code changes to the repository and since sam is a collaborator and uh, he looks at the code here he finds that uh, satish has a very bad practice of writing code he has not even given a simple comment in his code so he wants to propose some changes here the changes sam wants to add a comment line to the code so before making the changes sam issues a fork request so what do you mean by a fork request the entire repository the entire repository along with the files is copied into sam's private profile so he is going to have a copy of that github demo repository in his own profile so here the profile of this repository is satish slash github so who is the owner satish and what is the repository name github demo when you issue a fork the entire repository gets copied into sam's profile if the username is sam and the repository name is github demo a copy is made of that particular repository into sam's profile so this is a private repository and what sam can do is he can go and add the code changes so what code changes sam is interested in is interested in adding some more comment lines so let's say that sam changes the code so this is a separate repository a copy and you see that he is adding this comment line this program prints a message and this change is still not merged with your main repository you can call this to be the master or the main repository so how to merge this change into this repository for that sam should issue a pull request so he will create a pull request so this particular user will go and create a pull request to pull the proposed changes so these are the proposed changes into the master or the main repository so when he creates a pull request the owner will get to know a pull request has been created on his repository and he can go and see all the changes proposed by sam 
So what are the changes Sam is proposing? He is proposing a new comment line in the code. So if the owner is satisfied, he is happy with the changes, he can approve, he can review and approve the changes. So he will go and review and approve the changes and then he will merge. So what do you mean by merging? Once he approves the changes, he can go ahead and merge the changes into the master repository. So that's how fork, pull request and merge works in GitHub. I hope you all have understood uh, what is forking and what is a pull request and what is merging a pull request. Let's take a demo of all these concepts you have learned right now using GitHub. So I have created uh, two users here. This is uh, user Satish, he is the owner of the repository and uh, he owns uh, this particular repository by name GitHub demo. So this is the repository I was talking to you about. So Satish owns uh, this particular repository, GitHub demo. And what is there in this repository? He is just, he's just having a very simple Java class file. And you can see here, there is a very simple method in the class file. And what this method does is, it just prints an hello message. So this repository, GitHub demo, is being owned by this user called Satish. So we have this another user, Sam and Sam should be given access to the repository owned by Satish. So let's go and give access to Sam. So we have Satish here and this is the repository. How to add a collaborator on a repository? We have already seen this in the last class. Let me just show it again. So we are going to go to settings. We're just going to invite a collaborator to a repository and uh, we'll manage access. And then what we are going to do is we are going to go down and uh, we are going to invite a collaborator. So we are going to give the username Sam the 83 and then we are going to invite this collaborator. So I'm adding this team member Sam to this repository. So we have uh, added that and it says awaiting Sam the 83's response. It means a mail has been sent and Sam should accept our invitation to be a part of this repository. So let's uh, go and check uh, Sam's uh, inbox to see whether he has received any invitation. So here is the invitation. Satish invited you to be part of this repository. So we'll just... Uh, so Sam sees the invitation. So Satish has invited you to be part of this repository. So let's... Uh, and accept the invitation. Now Sam is accepting the invitation. So Sam accepts the invitation here and uh, he can now go and see whatever code that has been added in Satish repository. So this GitHub demo is a repository owned by Satish and Sam can go and see all the code files in this repository. Since he is a collaborator, he can see all the code files. So now comes the next thing. Now Sam is not happy because Satish has not given any uh, comment lines here. And as a collaborator, he wants to add some comment lines here. How can he go and add some comment lines? For that, the very first step is he has to create a copy. Say GitHub demo is now being owned by Satish. He has to somehow create a copy of this repository in his own profile. How to go and create a copy? You can go with fork. So when he just clicks on fork, what happens is this repository is getting copied. You can see here, forking Satish VIT GitHub demo into Sam's private profile. So now you can see this repository is now in the private profile of Sam. So Sam V83 GitHub demo. So Sam has created a copy of what Satish is owning right now. So in this copy, you can go and make any changes to the code. So the change is, he's going to add this comment line. So let's say this program prints a message and we can just say added by Sam for better understanding. So this is the change that Sam makes and uh, he can go and commit the changes. So when he commits, he's committing to his own private repository. So let's say um, he commits, he gives a comment, added a comment line and then commits. 
So when I say commit directly to the master branch, he's committing to his own repository. So here GitHub demo under Sam's profile is the master branch. So what, what Sam has done is Sam has made the changes and he has committed the changes in his own repository. Now, the next thing is these changes should be merged to the main repository that is being owned by Satish. And for that, you have to go and create a pull request. So let's go and see how Sam is going to move these changes to the main repository. So what is the main repository? The main repository is being owned by whom? It is owned by Satish. So if you go and look at the main repository, this is the main repository. And uh, if you go and take a look at the uh, main repository code, you will not have the comment line in the main repository code because uh, you see here, this is the main repository and the changes are not being pushed to the main repository. So how Sam can go ahead and push the changes? He can go and create a pull request. So since Sam has done all these changes in the private repository, he will go and create a pull request. So pull request is nothing but proposing the changes that should be moved from uh, this repository to the main repository. So you will go and create a new pull request. So, and then, so it very clearly says the base repository is owned by Satish and the head repository is nothing but where the changes have been made from the head repository, we are trying to push to the base repository owned by Satish. So we'll just go and create pull request. Okay, we can go and add a comment here. We can just say added a comment line and then we can go ahead and create pull request. So we are just proposing the changes that should be moved to the main repository. So we have created the pull request. Now we'll go to the uh, owner's profile. So here is Satish and we are in the profile of Satish and now he has uh, this repository. And uh, you can very well see here a fork has been created by Sam on this repository. And he has also got the pull request. You can go and view the pull request. So what do you mean by pull request? These are the changes proposed by Sam on his repository. So you can go and uh, uh, view what are the changes that are being proposed by Sam. You can go and see the files changed. So here you can see it very clearly highlights the changes here. So this is the change that uh, Sam proposes and you can go and review the changes. You can go and approve the changes. Since he is fine with the change, it's just a comment line. You can approve the change. So once when the changes are done, now you can merge the changes into the main repository. For that, what he has to do is he has to go with merge pull request and uh, you can just go and confirm merge. So once when you confirm merge, all the changes proposed by Sam will be moved to the main repository that is owned by Satish. So now the changes are merged. We'll just go to the uh, repository. We'll see whether the changes are there. So you can see here in calculated at Java. So this repository is owned by Satish and you can see here the changes have been merged. And uh, you can also get a lot of information on the uh, changes that were moved you can go and take a look at the number of commits being done on this file. It very well says the commit was done by Sam V83. He added a comment line and uh, the merge request was done by Satish, the owner itself from Sam V83. So this is how uh, proposed changes are moved to the main master repository. I hope you have understood what is fork, what is a pull request and then what do you mean by merging changes in GitHub? Is that clear? So this is one particular scenario wherein we don't have any conflicts. We have to take a scenario. We have to understand what do you mean by conflicts while merging and we have to understand how to resolve conflicts and merge. Okay, let's take up this uh, simple visualization to understand what a conflict is and how to resolve a conflict. Again, let's uh, take up the same example. We have an owner by name Satish. He owns this uh, repository with a simple class file. And now the uh, repository name, we'll consider that to be GitHub Demo 2. So that is the repository name. This is being owned by Satish. And Satish has a collaborator, or I can call him a collaborator or a team member. The name of the collaborator is Sam. 
and SAM will be provided access on this repository and you'll be able to view the code or you'll be able to fork the uh, repository. So SAM is now able to see the changes. As usual, Sam is not happy because Satish is not giving the comment lines for his code and he wants to add some comment lines. So Sam is interested in adding some comment lines to the main repository. So for that, what he does, he forks the repository in the sense he issues a fork and he copies the main repository to his own profile. So you see here a copy is uh, being made and now we can go ahead and make the changes. We have seen this already. So in his own private area, he's going to go and make the changes. So he has added a comment line here. You can see this program prints a message. So he is, he is now making the changes. Meanwhile, our owner is somehow excited and he wants to make some changes to his code. So what he does is he goes and he changes the code in the main repository. Maybe he, he wants to add a comment line. Say he changed this code like this. Satish wrote this program. Somehow he wants to display that he has written this program. So he just goes and adds a comment line here. Satish wrote this program. So he parallelly changes the code. So we have now two users parallelly working on this code. So Satish has finished, he has, he has uh, committed, we can say he committed the changes to the master branch. Since he is the owner, he can very well easily commit the changes. And now our uh, collaborator Sam, he has finished working on this and he wants to move the changes to the main repository. So he issues a pull request. So what he is doing is he's proposing that all these changes should be written to the main repository. So now what happens is a conflict arises. What do you mean by a conflict here? You can see here, he is going to write this code. He is going to write this file. And what it will do is it will go and override the changes that Satish has made. So when he is going to pull these changes here, it's going to delete this comment that Satish has created already. So it's going to overwrite it. When you take a closer look at this repository, Sam has added a comment line, whereas he has failed to really capture the comment line added by Satish. So Satish wrote this program. This comment line is actually missing in this change. So if he's going to move his changes to this repository, he's going to actually delete this particular comment line added by Satish. And he's going to write only one particular comment line that is this program prints a message. So what we understand here is why we have a conflict here when he is pushing the changes, he is deleting the changes of another user. So this is called a conflict and how to resolve this conflict when you are trying to do this using GitHub, GitHub is going to say that you have a conflict. You cannot do this because you are overriding the changes of another user. So it will say there is a conflict. So we will be getting the conflict notification. Sam will be getting the conflict notification. So when Sam tries to push these changes to the main repository, you'll be getting a conflict notification from GitHub. So how will he resolve this conflict is he has to manually go through the code that is already there in the main repository. So he knows that there is one comment line that is actually missing in his uh, code. So he should go and manually change his code. Okay, so now he has accommodated the changes made by Satish too. So now there is no conflict and uh, once there is no conflict, you can go and again raise the pull request and uh, now there will be no conflict because all the changes have been accommodated. Now owner Satish will be getting the uh, pull request. You will go and approve the changes and then you will issue a merge code so that finally the changes are merged in the main repository. So that's how conflicts are resolved. I hope you have understood what is a conflict and how conflicts can be resolved in GitHub. Now let us, uh, and this is some theory behind it. You can go and read the theory. We'll go and take a demo using GitHub. We'll see how these concepts, what we have learned right now, how conflicts arise and how conflicts get resolved using GitHub. So we'll take the same two users. We have Satish here. So this is user Satish. You can see his profile. He is the owner of this particular uh, repository by name GitHub Demo2. So this is a repository that Satish owns. And uh, this is the simple class file in the repository. 
Okay, Satish should provide access to Sam, who is one of the collaborators on this repository. As usual, we can go and give access to Sam. We go to settings. We have this uh, manage access. And uh, we'll go and invite a collaborator. So who is the collaborator? Sam is the collaborator. We'll invite him. Sam B83. Okay. So now it says an invitation has been sent. So an email has been sent to Sam V83. Let's go and quickly check Sam's inbox. You see here there's an invitation from Satish. So what uh, Sam is going to do is he's going to go and view the invitation. And uh, so here is the invitation. Sam will be accepting the invitation. So now he can collaborate and work with Satish on the repository by name GitHub Demo 2. So now you can see whatever that is there in this particular repository GitHub Demo 2, the simple class file is there. What next? Sam is not happy with the uh, coding practices of Satish. He feels that uh, Satish is not giving any of the comment lines. So what he can do is he can go and very well create a fork. By fork, we mean create a copy of uh, the repository owned by Satish into Sam's profile. So now you see GitHub Demo 2, we are just porting it and we have a copy of that in Sam's profile. So GitHub Demo 2 got copied from the main repository into Sam's user profile. So Sam can go and add his code changes. So Sam is now going and editing this file and uh, what are the changes he is going to make? You can just go and say comment line added by Sam. So he makes these changes and then he commits the changes to his own repository. So let's say added a comment line by Sam. So Sam makes the changes. Now he commits the changes to his own repository in his own profile. So this change you see here, comment line added by Sam is not uh, impacting the main repository. So if you go to the main repository, which is owned by Satish, if you go to the main repository and you take a look at the code, you can see here the changes made by Sam is not still pulled to the main repository because he has to raise a pull request. So as I told you earlier, all of a sudden, you know, Satish gets uh, excited and he wants to add more comments to his program. So what he does is he directly goes and edits the file. He now adds a comment line to his code. So Satish is adding a comment line here. I am adding a comment line by Satish. So Satish adds a comment line and he commits to the master repository. So let's say added comment line by Satish. So he adds a comment line and he commits the changes. So this is similar to what we have seen in our PPT here. Sam has uh, added a comment line to the repository in his own private profile. Whereas uh, Satish has added a comment line to his repository. Now what next? Sam will be trying to push his changes to the main repository. Let's go to Sam's profile. So Sam has made the changes. He's still unaware of the changes made by Satish. So he's just trying to create a pull request and propose these changes to Satish. So let's go and create a new pull request. So Sam is creating a pull request. And, uh, and when he creates a pull request, you can, you can very well say here, can't automatically merge. So there is a conflict. That's what is the message. Why there is a conflict happening? Because he's trying to push these changes to the main repository. Thereby he's trying to override the changes made by Satish. So that's why it says can't automatically merge. But anyway, he just goes and issues a pull request. So he's saying, I've added a comment line and then he is saying create pull request. So when he tries to create a pull request, you can see here Sam is getting the notification. This branches conflicts that must be resolved. So it tells him that there are some conflicts with the main repository for this particular file. So he has to go and resolve the conflicts before merging. Since there is a conflict, how to resolve conflict, he'll go and click on resolve conflict. And then he'll be able to see what is really conflicting. 
So he has added comment line added by Sam and it very well says here these changes should be merged. So what you can do is you can go and resolve the conflict by merging the changes. So just merge the changes now. Okay, so now he has included the comment line added by Satish too. He has merged the changes, so he can just go and say mark as resolved. Okay, he resolves the conflict and then issues a merge. So Sam has resolved the conflict and he has created a pull request. Now you can go and see Satish will be getting the pull request from Sam. So here is the pull request from Sam and uh, Satish can go and see what is that pull request. And um, you can go and see the files changed by Sam. So you see here, it very well, uh, very well uh, tells him what are the changes. So this is the previous code and this, these are the changes. So you can review the changes, you should go and approve the changes. So he is fine with the changes. So he goes ahead, approves the changes and then he merges the changes with the main repository. So confirm merge. So now the owner is approving the changes and merging the changes with the main repository. So that will be a final step. So when you go and take a look at the uh, source code in our GitHub repository, we can see here the changes would have been merged. So finally, the changes that were conflicting got resolved and got merged with the main repository. There's one more catch here. The uh, collaborator can directly merge the changes to the master repository if there is no conflict. Finally, the merge has been completed. So this is how conflicts can happen and that's how conflicts should be resolved. So we will be resolving the conflicts. The person who is proposing the changes to the repository, you will be getting a conflict notification and you should see what are the conflicts. You should resolve the conflicts, add the changes to his code and then he has to merge uh, the changes or he has to create a pull request uh, to have the changes into the main repository. So that's it and since you have been using github for your projects i hope this will be very helpful to you um, and if you get conflicts please see to that you resolve the conflicts and push the changes to the main repository that's it for today's class thank you